So now in this video, we're going to look at a circuit where a Schmidt trigger inverter self-oscillates. And while it does so, at the output, we have a couple LEDs with protective resistors so that the LEDs light up when the output goes high or low. So a digital inverter, not a power inverter, which is different, but a digital inverter the output is the opposite of the input. If you have a one in, you'll have a zero out. If you have a zero in, you'll have a one out. So we could also say high for one or low for zero. But in this circuit, we're powering the integrated circuit here, the 74HC14 with five volts. So one is relatively close to five volts. They're not exact voltages, but uh, relatively close to five and at zero, is relatively close to zero volts or ground right there. So in any case, when the uh, capacitor is discharged, we'll have a low enough voltage to have a low input. We'll have a high output there. So it'll connect the uh, output. will provide as close to five volts as it can, probably actually four. But in any case, as close to five volts as it can. As you can see, it'll charge the capacitor through the resistor. Once the voltage rises far enough, then we'll have a high input that will turn the output low. It'll connect to ground as good as it can and it will discharge the capacitor. Since this is a Schmidt trigger, there's not a specific voltage that divides high and low. If it's already low, it has to go up a bit extra to go high and once it is considered a high input, then it has to go back down a bit extra to be considered low. That's the hysteresis, the middle point where it stays in whatever state it was last put into. So not only will we have a changing voltage at the output and thus changing voltage at the capacitor, we can use that changing voltage since this is a 74HC14, it can sink and source a fair amount of current. So we're gonna light a couple LEDs. When the output is low, you can see that the blue LED will light up. There'll be a voltage difference. When the output is high, as close to five volts as it can get, you can see that the red LED will light up because there's a voltage difference across it. I'm using a 1000 ohm resistor to protect the blue LED, only 220 ohms to protect the red LED because blue LEDs are just naturally brighter. So here we have the integrated circuit with most of the components removed. We need to power the integrated circuit. So the positive supply goes to pin 14, the uh, negative supply there. We're gonna use five volts, which is common for these integrated circuits. This particular one, we can use a wider range of voltages, but uh, you always wanna check the data sheet to make sure whatever voltage you're interested in will work. So we got it uh, powered there. And you'll notice directly to the uh, power rail, we have these other jumpers. Those are the inputs for the inverters we are not using. So they're the inputs, right below them are the outputs for that particular inverter. So that's one, two, three, we're using four, and then that's five, six right there. The outputs can stay floating, that is no problem. So for our timing, we're gonna take a 10 kilo ohm resistor and go from the output down there to the input. We're gonna shuffle this over a couple spots and uh, then we're gonna take our uh, 100 microfarad capacitor. So again, if you use higher values for one or both of these, then you're gonna get a, a slower timing because it's gonna take longer for the capacitor to charge to a given voltage and, uh, and to discharge. If you use lower values, it'll go faster because the, ca the capacitor will charge and discharge faster. So a nice visual for these oscillators are the LEDs. I'm swapping the position of the LED with the resistor. That does not matter, but the LED has to be in the right direction. And so the long lead, the anode, is to the positive supply. Short lead, the cathode, I'm putting up one spot right there. I'm going to protect it with a 1000 ohm resistor, as I said before. And we have to go to the output uh, down the uh, bottom pin right there. And as you can see, I have it powered and we already have it flashing. So that flashes when the output goes low, the blue LED does. And finally, we have the uh, red LED. So we can use one, the other, or uh, both of them, and we're gonna use both of them. So the uh, short lead, the cathode, of course, has to go to ground. Long lead, the anode, is down one row right there. And as we said before, lower value resistor, since red LEDs don't get as bright, we're gonna go to the uh, anode down there and then to the output. And now we have our second LED flashing. 
So now, of course, whenever you're dealing with changing voltages, you really want to look at them with an oscilloscope, at least until you get familiar with how they're going to look. And uh, so we have the oscilloscope there. The cable comes to alligator clips. I just clip them to jumpers so I can easily move them to measure different points of a circuit right there. And I will zoom in a little bit. So first, let's look at the output down here, the uh, bottom pin. And there you can see we have, uh, when we have... Uh, good connections all around somewhere close to a square wave right there jumping up to almost five volts it's getting closer to five volts and i thought it would and going down to zero so that's what is changing the leds that changing voltage and the fact that this particular integrated circuit can provide plenty of current for the leds a lot of these integrated circuits are only for very very low current now we're going to go up one spot to the uh, input up here that's what is monitoring the voltage of the capacitor and so now you can see the voltage going up and down so that's the hysteresis for this particular integrated circuit anything above this voltage is a high input anything below that voltage is a low input and the middle ground is whatever it was last put into so it goes up it goes high it stays high the input until you get down there then the input is low and uh, you have to raise the voltage that much to get the input high again. And remember, the output is the opposite of the input. Since we have feedback, it is pulling the uh, input in the opposite direction of what it is. If it's low, the output is pulling it high. If it's high, the output is pulling it low. And that middle ground, that hysteresis, is what it's bouncing back and forth to. So, in any case, hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen. If you can donate, please do. That helps out the most, but just watching videos helps out a ton. I appreciate that. I'll see you in the next video.